Welcome to Dealmaker Diaries, where we dissect the intricate stories of individuals who've mastered the art of dealmaking. The epic journey of how Bill Gates, the mastermind behind Microsoft, catapulted the tech giant onto the global stage. So grab your popcorn and let's rewind to the roots of this technological powerhouse. Picture this, it's the late 70s, and a chance encounter with a magazine cover changes everything for Paul Allen, a programmer at Honeywell. Walking through Harvard Square, he stumbles upon the Altair 8800, the world's first microcomputer showcased in the January 1975 issue of Popular Electronics. The light bulb goes off in Allen's head, and he rushes to share this groundbreaking discovery with his high school buddy none other than the legendary Bill Gates. Gates, the brains of the operation, sees potential in developing BASIC for the Altair system. There's just one problem, no interpreter, no Altair system. But that doesn't stop this dynamic duo. With the help of Monty Davidoff, they hustle for eight intense weeks, crafting an interpreter that would make even the tech gods proud. Fast forward to the big moment. Alan jets off to Albuquerque to meet with Micro-Instrumentation and Telemetry Systems, MITs, the makers of Altair. Miraculously, the interpreter works like a charm, and MATS is on board to distribute Altair BASIC. With success in their grasp, Alan packs his bags, Gates bids farewell to Harvard, and voila, Microsoft is born in the heart of Albuquerque. But wait! Rewind to the birth of the name Microsoft. Allen, the wordsmith, concocts the term, blending microcomputer and software. Hyphenated at first, the duo officially registers the company as Microsoft on November 26, 1976, in the cool state of New Mexico. And who was the first addition to their squad? None other than high school collaborator Rick Weiland, marking the beginning of a powerhouse team. Fast forward again to January 1st, 1979, Microsoft's first international office in Japan, aptly named ASEI Microsoft. By this point, the term Microsoft is officially coined by Bill Gates, setting the stage for global domination. The lure of top programmers and a strategic move later, Microsoft plants its roots in Bellevue, Washington on January 1, 1979. Enter Steve Ballmer on June 11, 1980, joining the ranks and eventually succeeding Gates as CEO from 2000 to 2014. Hold on tight, because the roller coaster isn't over. June 25, 1981. Microsoft undergoes a major facelift, incorporating as Microsoft Corporation, Inc. Gates steps up as president and chairman of the board, while Paul Allen takes the reins as executive vice president and vice chairman. 1983 brings a pivotal moment, Allen's departure due to a Hodgkin lymphoma diagnosis. Tensions were high, but this setback didn't mark the end of their story. Gates and Allen, after a rocky period, mend fences and even give back to their roots by generously donating to their childhood school, Lakeside. Picture this. It's the late 70s and early 80s, the era of home computers like the Apple II and the Commodore 64. Microsoft wasn't just a software giant, it was a trailblazer. Their flagship product, Microsoft Basic, the powerhouse programming language dominating the scene. Think of it as the wizard behind the curtain orchestrating the magic of early home computers. Microsoft Basic wasn't just for show. It powered the Apple II with AppleSoft Basic and the Commodore 64 with Commodore Basic. But it didn't stop there. Microsoft made its mark on the IBM PC, bundling the IBM Cassette Basic. It was like Microsoft was the DJ spinning the records for every computer party. Now imagine this, Microsoft, not just sticking to the big players, but also hustling through an Apple dealer in West Palm Beach, Florida. They dropped not one, but two gems for the Radio Shack TRS-80. Typing Tutor, 
the guide to mastering the keyboard, and Math, a brainchild of a Hawaii professor doing mind-bending long integer math to dodge floating point numbers. Microsoft wasn't just about basic. It was about making computers accessible and fun. Hold on to your hats because here comes the game changer, the Z80 soft card. Microsoft engineered this beauty to turn the Apple II into a CPM operating system wizard. It was showcased at the West Coast Computer Fair in March 1980. And guess what? Immediate success. 5,000 cards flew off the shelves in three months, becoming Microsoft's cash cow in 1980. Talk about hitting the jackpot. But Microsoft wasn't content with just BASIC and CPM. They set their sights on Unix acquiring it from AT&T through a distribution license. Enter Xenix, Microsoft's take on Unix, adapted for various platforms with the help of Santa Cruz operation. And what was born out of this Unix love affair? None other than the iconic Microsoft Word. Ever heard of what you see is what you get or why Sci wig? Well, Microsoft Word was at the forefront, showcasing it to the world. Released in the spring of 1983, Microsoft Word made waves, offering a revolutionary on-disk distribution bundled with PC World's November 1983 issue. This move was groundbreaking, making Microsoft Word one of the pioneers of on-disk software distribution. And here's a fun fact. It wasn't the first time Microsoft played the on-disk card. They did it back in 1977 with Robert Uderwick's basic in information age. Innovation was in their DNA. Picture this, it's July 1980 and the tech cosmos is buzzing. IBM, the giant of giants, knocks on the door of a small Seattle-based company, Microsoft, co-founded by none other than Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Now, here's a twist. Gates' mother is working with IBM's CEO, John Opel, on the United Way's executive board. Coincidence? Fate? Either way, it's the spark that ignites the IBM PC flame. Fast forward to August 12, 1981, and after some hiccups with digital research, IBM decides to dance with Microsoft. The mission, a version of the CPM operating system for the upcoming IBM PC. Negotiations sputter and in swoops, Microsoft purchases a CPM clone named 86DOS from Tim Patterson for a bargain, less than a hundred grand. IBM slaps on a new name, IBM PC DOS, and the game begins. Now here's the scoop on CPM. It's the brainchild of Gary Kildall from Digital Research Inc. However, copyright concerns turn it into a tag team match between CPM and PC DOS, priced at $240 and $40, respectively. The underdog, PC DOS, takes the crown due to its budget friendly tag. 35 of Microsoft's 100 hustlers dive deep into the IBM project for over a year, sculpting the tech masterpiece. MS DOS wasn't just an operating system. It was a magic portal to a world of possibilities. It fueled the dreams of programmers, developers, and anyone daring enough to venture into the digital Wild West. The command prompt, the black screen, these were our portals to the future. As MS DOS took center stage, it became the launch pad for Microsoft's ascent. It wasn't just software, it was a catalyst for innovation. And here's a fun tidbit the 86 in 86 DOS? It refers to the Intel 8086 processor, the heartbeat of early PCs. It's like a secret code embedded in the tech history books. So there you have it, the tale of how Bill Gates and Microsoft turned a humble deal with IBM into a game-changing move. From a cozy office in Seattle to becoming the go-to name in personal computing, that's the magic of MS-DOS.